la lección 7 estructuras pretérito de verbos regulares. What is the preterite? The preterite you're going to hear used a lot, that terminology. The preterite means past tense. Um, why don't they just call it the past tense? Actually, Spanish has two past tenses. So we'll just start with the first one, and it's called the preterite, el preterito. Okay. The other one is the imperfect, which we will not get to during this class. That's for the next level. The preterite is used to refer to actions that the speaker views as completed in the past. As with present tense verbs, the preterite is formed by adding new endings to the stem of the verb. So you knock off your AR or your ER or your IR, and then you add endings. Of course, your endings will be different now for preterite verbs. The forms of regular verbs in the preterite tense are as follows. So we're learning all of them together, AR verbs, ER verbs, and IR verbs. For AR verbs, the endings are going to be E with an accent, aste, o, amos, aron, and this yo form is pronounced e. So yo tomé means I took. Tu tomaste, you took. Él tomó, or ella tomó, or usted tomó. Nosotros tomamos, and then ellos, ellas, or ustedes tomaron. E, haste, o, amos, aron. Okay? ER verbs, for example, comer, to eat. Comí, I ate. Comiste, you ate. Comió, he ate, or you formal ate, or she ate, comimos, we ate, or comieron, they or y'all ate. IR verbs, escribir, to write, escribí, I wrote, escribiste, you wrote, escribió, he wrote, she wrote, or you formal wrote, escribimos, we wrote, escribieron, they or y'all wrote. Now, if you take a look, you'll notice that the endings for ER verbs and IR verbs are exactly the same in the preterite. So, E, E, Iste, Iste, Io, Io, Imos, Imos, Ieron, Ieron. So, that should help you remember. An ER verb or an IR verb, the endings are always going to be like these. Now, we have some changes. We're just going to talk about some of them now, so note the following changes in the preterite. For verbs that end in C-A-R, so these are A-R verbs, but they actually end in C-A-R, in the first person singular of the preterite, the C is going to change to a Q-U. So for example, the verb is buscar, in this first one here, buscar, normally we would write B-U-S-C-E. But for verbs that end with car, we're going to change that C to a Q-U. Here's another example, tocar. The C changes to Q-U. For verbs that end in G-A-R, in the first person singular of the preterite, the G changes to a G-U, or perhaps think of it as just adding a U in there. So, llegué. All right, so we've got the U in there as well. Yo pagué. I arrived. I paid. For verbs ending in Z-A-R, in the first person singular of the preterite, the Z changes to Q-U. So, empezar becomes empecé. Well, that's not right. The Z does not change to a Q-U. Okay. This should change to a C, is what this should say. So, yo empecé. Yo comencé. Okay, the reason for this, especially on these first two, is because if we just left this a C and it's spelled B-U-S-C-E, well, if you remember clear back to pronunciation, when you have a C and an E next to each other, the C makes the soft S sound. But the verb is buscar. We need that hard K sound. And so to do that, we need a spelling change, which is the need for the Q-U. Gar works the same way. 
G and E next to each other makes a he sound, but we still want the g sound. So ye ge, pa ge. Okay. The Z A R doesn't necessarily really follow those kinds of rules. The Z changing to a C um, because Z and C both sound the same. They both sound empese. So I don't necessarily know the reasoning for the change with the Z-A-R's. Note a few more following changes in the preterite. Certain E-R and I-R verbs whose stem ends in a vowel change I to Y in the third person. For example, leer, to read. Now, this is in the third person. So he read. Normally we would put L E. I O, but in Spanish you don't put three vowels next to each other. So we need to change that I to a Y and then add your accent. Same thing here. It would be L E I E R O N, but we don't put three vowels next to each other in Spanish, so we change the I to a Y. Leyeron. Creer is to believe, so it works the same way. Leer, creer. Leyo. Creyó, leyeron, creyeron. Verbs with stem changes in the present tense do not take the same changes in the preterite. So, like Rodrigo vuelve tarde, Rodrigo arrives late, it doesn't have a stem change in the preterite. I know that's sometimes confusing because you've got it in your mind, oh yeah, these are stem changers, but that's only in the present tense. So, if it's a stem changer in the present, it's not necessarily a stem changer in the preterite. So, Rodrigo volvió tarde, anoche. Uh, so, last night Rodrigo arrived late. All right. Uh, this is just a little activity. I don't think we're going to go through it, but let me just look at the model. And so, it's like a little partner thing that you might do. It's from your textbook. ¿Qué compraste tú? So, what did you buy? Compré una blusa. I bought a blouse. ¿Cuánto te costó? How much did it cost for you? Me costó 40 dólares. It costed me 40 dollars. So we've got a few things going on here that we've worked on in, uh, in this course. We've got um, the preterite. We've got um, some question words like cuánto and qué. And we've got indirect object pronouns. So, bringing it all together. All right, that's it. Hasta luego. Getting closer to the end.